Welcome to the Everyday PM podcast, the podcast where we discuss project management principles for your everyday life. My name is Anne Campia, and I'm a certified project slash program manager with a decade of experience working for healthcare, retail, consumer goods, and tech industries. I am so excited to welcome back to the podcast, Greg Christensen, who is the vice president of projecthub.com which is a project management software that eliminates complexity. He has nearly two years or two years, two decades in the CMMS space, extensive facilities, maintenance and building management experience as well. So Greg, for those of you, for those who have not met you yet, please take a brief moment to introduce yourself. Thanks, Anne. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure. And I, I just appreciate the way we're able to uh, get into these exciting subjects. So a uh, little bit about me. Uh, my name is Greg Christensen. I'm the vice president of Project Hub. And I have right around 20 years experience in CMMS. Prior to that, I was in building maintenance and management, uh, spent a lot of time there. Heavy, heavy business development experience, uh, lots of clients I've worked with. And through the culmination of that whole kind of experience, we're here today where I've been able to essentially, we can almost call it skill stack. I, I was able to skill stack experience into new experiences. And now I'm in a, a brand new creative space where I'm learning project management while I'm delivering project management software to people that need it. And I, I think that's part of what you know we're going to talk about today. So I, I hope that's a good enough introduction. I like to keep those things pretty light. Yeah, I think that's great. And we will definitely get to know you a little bit better in just a few as this episode is focused on you, Greg, and your experiences in your professional journey, as well as your experiences now being the vice president of projecthub.com. And we were just chatting before this episode started about how we met. And, you know, this is the beauty of the world we live in right now, especially with LinkedIn being such a uh, social community, uh, essentially another outlet for people who want to connect professionally. And it was there that we were able to connect. I, the Everyday PM came up on your feed, luckily, uh, and fortunately, and fa as fate would have it, you reached out to me. You are, again, promoting the software today, but you know, you reached out to me organically just to learn more about project management in general, just for your own interests. And I love that about our relationship is that, again, it's very authentic and just very organic. And that's the beauty of this whole networking atmosphere that LinkedIn is able to provide us with. So Greg, I just want to give a quick shout out to fate bringing us together. Uh, you've been a part of other episodes where we've talked about project management basics, where you brought questions into our project management coffee house, and we had a chat about those. We've, we've also talked about pre and post mortems. So those have been some of my most favorite episodes because, you know, again, it's just you coming in, wanting to know more, wanting to learn about project management and me trying my best to showcase what I know albeit maybe if it's enough or not, but you know, hopefully you've learned a thing or two about project management in our interaction. So with that being said though, today's episode is about Greg Christensen, projecthub.com. I would love to understand uh, who Greg is because I think before we met, we didn't know who you were and we still really don't know who you are because your introductions are so brief and so humble about your experiences. So why don't we start off by you walking us through your professional journey? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. And uh, so just, just to build on what you were saying, you know, with that one day when your, your episode hit the feed and I was lucky enough to see it, um, we were able to connect after that. You have been extremely helpful. And I think we're going to get to that a little bit later in the episode, but Going back to give people some background on my professional development, I'm going to go back to the 90s. So in the 1990s, I was heavily involved in business development, those types of things. I was highly partic I was participating in a lot of sales activities, but really more full cycle. And I learned pretty early on that for some reason, I don't know what it is, 
I am a big proponent of client outcomes okay. in everything that I have ever done. I'm very, very passionate about that. So I like this kind of concept of the win-win. It's very elusive. It's very elusive to make that full circle kind of relationship actually happen. And everybody's trying. Uh, so I really wanted to make that one of my focuses. In the building maintenance and management industry, which is really, you know, through the 90s where I was really cutting my teeth with working with different types of people, facilities management scenarios, really large teams, I got a lot of exposure to how to, how to actually complete that cycle, the win-win. I'm going to do something for you. Our company is going to deliver something for you. We're going to deliver it at an extremely high level and you're going to be happy about it. That's why you pay us. That's why we're allowed to be successful. And that stuck with my career all the way up until this moment. That's very important to me. Mm. Now, as we were in the building maintenance and management industry, which is going to which is going to catapult us into my CMMS background, we were leveraging lots of technology and different systems to deliver what we delivered. We really knew what we were doing, but we were using old school methodologies, hard copy work orders, different things like that. Now, as technology became better, we were able to start leveraging that technology within our organization to continue to scale without losing the quality of what we did because we wanted to get really much better at it. We wanted lots of efficiencies. Towards the end of the 90s, heading into around 2000, I left and went to the e-commerce industry, but my partner and founder in that previous business started to build a system from the ground up to manage all this workload because everything on the market, it wasn't very good. It didn't work the way we wanted it to, and we needed to build our own. He called me and said, hey, can you come over here and help me with this? I want to figure out how to bring it to market because all the clients want to use it for all their other stuff. And I said, hey, why not? So I jumped in there and about 15 years later, we were able to sell it. We scaled, we dealt with all kinds of different clients in many different sectors. And interestingly enough, what we didn't realize is we were actually managing projects constantly. Oh, wow. through building yeah. maintenance and management. Nice. We were also doing it in the CMMS world, right? Mm -hmm. So fast forward a little bit, we sell the company. I stick with the acquiring company acting as a subject matter expert because I understood everything about the business, the client, the whys, the whatnots, all those things. And in 2020, I left the industry. Okay. I took a little hiatus. Uh, I had to make up for about... <laughs> 35 or 40 weeks of lost vacation. And I just took some downtime and I started thinking, well, I wonder what's going to be next. Well, I knew Project Hub was already being built starting in 2019, early 2019. And I found out they were getting real close to MVP, which is minimally viable product. And I said, well, maybe that's a good entry point. So we talked it out, worked it out, and I got involved. So the last six months or so, maybe a little bit less than that, I've been almost hyper-focused on learning about project management because although we were managing projects and we know how to kind of get things done, I never understood the various philosophies and methodologies within PMBOK. I did not understand much about you know PMI. PMI is a great learning resource. And I also was getting exposed through those years to people that were um, Lean Six Sigma black belts, uh, et cetera, in the CMMS world. So what I didn't realize is I understood more about project management than I gave myself credit. Mm. So now, as we're going on this learning kind of journey, we arrive at today where Project Hub has got a lot of exciting things going on. We've covered a little bit of ground through uh, what we kind of call pre-launch, and that doesn't necessarily match up with everybody's definition of that. And it's been really exciting, and it's about to get even more exciting. So I hope that's a, a good summary and I didn't put anybody to sleep. No, no, not at all. I mean, it just, it seems in many ways so calculated, but also not. Like you, you kind of went for what you were interested in. You knew you were good at something and could be successful in it. And, and now you find yourself in the space where you are getting ready to launch yet another product, but it's a product that in, in some ways you, you realize throughout your, your own professional journey that 
you probably knew more about this subject matter than you had originally thought. And so while I wanted to frame my next question by saying you were in you're currently in unfamiliar territory when it comes to project management, Greg, by the sound of your professional journey, and this is something that clicks with a lot of people and project management is, hey, I've been doing a lot of project management related tasks or duties in my role or even in my everyday life. And then realizing, oh, wait a minute, this is project management in some ways, whether it's uh, building a process or launching a product, right? Or starting a business, there's always going to be something that is related to project management if you are dealing with people, processes, schedules, risks, you name it. So Greg, I like that in your professional journey, you started to have a reflection of of how much you actually already did know about project management. And so then you get pulled into Project Hub um, to be a part of this project. What was it about Project Hub that really struck you as, oh, this is the next thing for me. This is something that I, I really want to throw myself into. That's a great question because the, so like this aha moment where I said, Hey, I want to do this. It had to do with a combination of things. So number one, I knew who was involved. And that's really important because if you know, you have certain team members that you've worked with on several different things throughout your life, career or otherwise, that you know kind of what you're going to get and you know there's going to be a certain kind of vision. One of the things that I've been good at, and I, I tell people this uh, when they ask me, you know, how have you approached different businesses that you've been involved in? For me, it's all about adopting the vision of the founder mm. and understanding what that vision really is and 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 making that happen kind of at at a constant velocity mm -hmm. if we could even say that so i saw project hub several times before i joined i saw how how the how the ui was impressive simplistic yet impactful so initially it made sense to me when I started to see the boards and how the board can be built out. And what happened was when, when the timing worked out, I said, well, where are we going to go with this? And we had a little bit of room on that creativity. So it was, I think I was attracted to the challenge yeah, and also the opportunity to do a few things that we didn't get to do in the other businesses that we're going to be doing at project hub. Um, and some of it I can't, I can't articulate fully because I'm, I'm kind of trying to tighten up the messaging on that. But we've got a system that really allows for both project managers and non-project managers acting in a capacity like a project manager to get things done. Yeah. And they have some options on the way that they can do it. And I have not seen that very often in my life where a singular solution, a solution can satisfy more than one thing. Usually it's all about problem, right? I heard, a, I heard a talk recently where, you know, it's really important that you have one problem, one client mm -hmm. and one channel. Uh -huh. And as much as we want that, we ended up with more. Right. When we really evaluate it. And some of this is more recent, more recent in, in the development, but hopefully that makes sense. I, I think um, what's really been important for me over the last five months or so is the learning that's available for, for people like yourself, a couple of other key individuals that have helped me put a name to what I think I understood. And then I've had so many Ooh, I thought I knew that. I knew it a little bit, but it's actually this. And I that's that's what's empowering for me. And it and I can carry that forward to help people. That's what I really like. Absolutely. I mean, it just it just makes sense. And you 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 touched on this and I want to dig in a little bit there on the your ability to kind of tease out what the vision of the leadership is. 
And I know that can be a challenging conversation at times for some project managers who don't necessarily know how to articulate what they're truly asking for. And so in these types of conversations, what I can see happening is a project manager asking, what's your vision? And then the leadership team just coming back with a laundry list of to do's which is essentially not what they're asking for, but I can kind of see that conversation going that way. And so, Greg, you talk about being successful in having those types of conversations where you can really get a pulse of what the leadership team wants to do from a vision perspective rather than a to-do list perspective. How do you approach that conversation and how do you know that it's truly the vision that you're hearing rather than you know, a to-do list or, or, um, or goals or objectives for the year? How do you differentiate between the two? Oh, that's, that's a well-formulated question because, <laughs> because some, some of it, I can't, some of it, I can't actually answer. Yeah. Um, in other words, the essence of a thing when it comes to a founder's vision, first, you have to take it at face value. First, you have to try to understand it out of the gate. Just what did they just say? In other words, and you and I have talked about this in that question of why. You got to know the question. You got to know the answer to the question why. That's why why is such an important question in project management or anything else. When you're talking about execution, it's going to come back to why. Mm -hmm. That's going to lead you to your execution. So I'll listen to this information and then I'll try to understand it. And then I'll, I'll put that back to the individual. And kind of get us on the same page as far as what that is. Then when I know that, when I've confirmed my understanding is accurate based on what they were trying to convey, then I go away and I work with it. Yeah. I experiment with it. I do research. I think about well, what does that really mean? How could I explain that to someone that doesn't understand it in that way? Mm -hmm. And how could I explain it to someone who wants it in a much more advanced way? That's what I try to do. I want to, in other words, I like having a way to answer the same question three or four different ways that are still going to get those individuals to the same understanding. Got it. Yeah, and that makes I, sense. I, but I don't know, I don't know how it really happens. I'd have to sit down and really <laughs> try to break that down. And then I get in my head too much, right? So start spinning around. You know, there's, 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 in the instances that we've had conversations, Greg, I think there are just some inherent skills that are, to your point, very hard to articulate on how you're able to achieve that type of outcome from a conversation. But I will say in our interactions, I believe that there is just a level of authenticity in the way you speak to people that will likely resonate as, oh, well, this you know, person is being authentic and transparent with me that why don't I just share with them my overarching vision of what I want to do with this and let kind of Greg go off and into into the playing field and see what he can come up with to kind of riff on this idea. Right. So I kind of see for, I, I wasn't in the room where it happens, where you guys have these conversations, but I do I do believe that um, your sheer presence will probably present a, an opportunity and an environment for visions to be shared clearly and transparently and in detail and in, in a way that feels more like you're brainstorming or, or kind of creative minds bouncing ideas off of each other rather than here's what I want X, Y, and Z, Greg, go get this done. And so um, I wanted to share that with our audience because I think it's really important to number one, differentiate what Greg's talking about when he's making these decisions of where he wants to emphasize and place his time and where does he want to, what does he want to back as products that he works on, for example, um, and how important it is to tease out those types of things. And, and Greg brings up such a great point about understanding fully what you're going to be investing your time and your efforts into because in our everyday lives, as well as our professional lives, time is so limited. And as project managers, we're often working against the clock. And so where you want to invest, where you want to move forward in, um, that's all important questions to ask yourself and then creating that vision with the leadership team. If it's a product that you're working on, 
would be such an amazing opportunity for somebody, right? And so, Greg, I think it resonates fully that Project Hub was the product that you wanted to kind of fully dive into. You've talked through where you're at from a launch perspective. I've had a chance, um, fortunately, to give some of my feedback on the on the tool as well, and I think it's wonderful. But why don't we dive a little bit into Project Hub itself? I know that you liked it uh, from the times that you pre-tested it because it was something from an everyday person that would help simplify your tasks and all of the processes that you have to work with in your everyday life. So let's talk about the system, the tool. Again, you, you touched on what attracted you to working on the product, but let's dive into a little bit more of the details of what it can offer to those who are using it. Well, that now that that's a pretty extensive list. So I want to be a little bit careful because I'm not a huge fan of what we call feature dumping. Sure. And then there's this other concept that ah, nobody really cares about what your system does, but they do want an outcome. Mm -hmm. So when we look at Project Hub and let's face it, project management software is a wide, I mean, it's a very vast landscape of companies doing things in many different ways. And I would, I would first and foremost say they're all trying to do what they do as well as they possibly can. We know that, right? right? So when we look at differentiation and where are the biggest impacts going to come from, why Project Hub? If you want to answer that question, why Project Hub? It satisfies a couple of things extremely well. Number one, it is a sophisticated system that can in fact be used in a simple way to avoid the complexity of project management and project delivery. But the, the, the sophistication, all it does is it moves to the background. So you still get the same sophistication. And at the end of the day, for us, what is most important about project management, forget about your software or anything else. The number one thing to us is the deadline. When is it due? You must deliver on time. Save everything else. Now, we can get granular or less granular and go with the obvious. Well, it's got to be on budget. Of course it does. It's got to be this. It's got to be that. We've got to make sure we have the resources and all that. What does that really translate into? Schedule risk. Number yeah. one thing that you need constant awareness of is your schedule risk. And this goes back like, uh, first time I ever learned about what is schedule risk really. And I, I've done more learning since we last met. So if we talk about things like the theory of constraints, mm -hmm. how do you identify the constraint? You need a system that gives you the clues on where to look so you can mitigate quickly. So what Project Hub is going to do is it's going to maintain your deadlines because of our unique date, I suppose, calculations, the way we treat the dates, yeah. it's going to constantly let you know where you're at risk within your project. You want your project manager, managers, your teams, your PMO, ultimately to run better, faster, and leaner. Mm -hmm. That's 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 really what Project Hub does for you. And it collects and manages all that data so that you can look into those metrics and see where do you have problems. Yeah. Where do you have business opportunities within that project or within your PMO? And that's what I was talking about early on when I said we, we kind of satisfy two different things. So Project Hub, if you want to manage projects in a very simplistic way and you don't want all the KPIs and the metrics behind it, you can use it that way. However, if you want to really run things with the dates, with the right tracking of your buffer, buffer consumption and resource availability, you can do that as well. It does both extremely well. So wow. that's what I meant about the rareness of a solution that satisfies two types of users. No, I think you're, I think you're right. Because, you know, when I look at systems and trust me, I've done a lot of research because as part of my master's program, that was one of the projects we had to do was go through all of the systems available and kind of rank them in order. And as a PM, you're consistently looking for a software that will suit the needs of your organization or even just your personal work, right? So um, the way I see systems the way is the way you classified it in, in what you just said, which is there are your very, very robust 
and kind of complex uh, PMISs, right? Your uh, project management information systems. And then you've got your um, more simple ones that are, are really, uh, from a user perspective, very easy to use. They will track kind of just very high level. Here's my to-do list. Here are all the things I need to chip away at for the X date. And that's it. No additional reporting, um, nothing on constraints or dependencies. It just gives you the very, very basics. And so for project managers out there, it's important to note that even in the PMBOK, uh, there's, the PMBOK obviously is entirely dedicated to guiding us as project managers, but there are sections in the PMBOK that talk about project management systems. So while a project manager can project manage on your own, eventually you're going to need some sort of tool or tracking system to just keep all your data housed in one place or, or something that is visual so that you can report to your leadership on the status of your project. And so while I'd like to say that a project manager can operate solely, at some point you are going to have to invest yourself in some sort of software or system to track some of this information. And the way Greg has classified it, I think, Greg, you are on point. There's nothing that really truly exists in the middle that gives you the complexity if you need it or the simplicity if you need it. And so I'm glad to hear that Project Hub is is trying to do just that. Yeah, and and you know, something that you just mentioned that was really important, um, and I was I was circling around it, and that is when when you have these simplistic approaches or these uh, these other systems that don't do exactly that, right? They don't tell you, I want to know right now, am I at risk? Project Hub does that. Mm. But a lot of the other systems out there, although they do a lot of great things, I'm not slinging mud here. We're, we're talking about the core gap that, that we're really trying to solve. And that is, it relates to how these systems become dumping grounds using arbitrary start dates or maybe even no due dates whatsoever. And that that's an opportunity right there to to solve a really really big problem with project hub when you build out your project on project hub and you start leveraging the different tools within it and i know I, it's it's a great system for building out and managing how to produce and deliver a podcast that that is i love that about mm -hmm. it but when we talk about the big complex projects right you've got 50 different projects going at once or you've got a team of 50 people that are working on even one project, you, you don't want people just funneling data in that is meaningless. And a lot of the systems out there, they track different things, not in, not in the exact way that we do. In Project Hub, are you familiar? I, I shouldn't even say that. I know you're going to know what I'm talking about. I'm the one that's getting familiar with it. So have you heard of the project execution maturity model. Yes, I ha I have now. <laughs> like thousands of times. Have right? I heard of it? Yes. Do I utilize it? That's the other question, right? But yes, I have heard of it. Okay, so with my limited experience and understanding, I want to be real forthcoming about that. Okay. What Project Hub actually does is put somebody in an organization like that that's trying to achieve the pinnacle of what the the model is all about it's about getting you to a point where all you do as a pmo is you constantly improve you look for risk you look for gaps and you improve you look for risk you look for gaps and you improve there's no more of those so i i'm looking at the three stage model that i was recently taught and i really dug into it and started learning about it you can start at basic collaboration whereas most of these systems out there at that level are going to be dumping grounds of meaningless information. Mm. No fault to them. It's just the way they're set up. Okay. Yeah. Now, when, when you start out there, you then by following that, the three level maturity model, you are going to then start working your project better as an overall team perspective. Right. And then, so you're moving beyond collaboration. And then ultimately when you get to that third rung and there's a, there's the five rung, I forget the gentleman's name that designed that system. It starts with a K. Um, that that's when you are a, a really dialed in unit. Kanban. You're like, you're, you're yeah. Yeah. And that's well, and then, then we can get into all the things like the visual aspects of, 
you know, you talked about leadership, right? So yeah. ultimately what we want is we want leadership, C-suite, maybe maybe a touch below C-suite and even go all the way to the board level. They need to be able to look at something right now and say, hmm, any problems? Nope, on to my day. I got plenty of stuff to do. Right. They are running your organ, your entire company. Yeah. So they don't have time. They want to see risks, get rid of them. See risks, get rid of them. That's what Project Dub project hub sorry does at its core that's the core functionality but then we flipped it because our primary builder wanted something that gives you a highly organized to-do list and we have a prioritization system that actually escalates every single thing you have on your board or you could use the table view or you could use our activities view right you can actually see the prioritization happen in in more like real time. It's actually going to escalate what needs to be handled now. It's going to ignore all the white noise yeah, and yeah. help you move, like I said, better, faster, uh, and leaner. Yeah. And I could go on and on and on. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole, but I, I hope everybody gets the idea of, of what it can really do for you that systems on the market today aren't doing. And Greg, and Greg essentially just did a mini masterclass on how to articulate your vision as opposed to a feature dump, like he was talking about, Greg, I think that was great because I think, you know, I I absolutely hear and see the vision. I've been, again, able to kind of play around a little bit in the tool. So it's a lot of fun for project managers. I think it's trying to do a lot, but not a lot, you know, at the same time, to your point, um, it's trying to provide everything you need. But then at the same time, if you don't need all of that, you could pull it back. So it's definitely an interesting space you're playing in because, you know, you've got a part of the system that's, that's contending with your asanas and your jiras and you know those 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 systems that you know these larger corporations are utilizing to really organize all of the work that is flowing through a more agile system and then you've got um other systems like monday.com or your smart sheets which um i think are are much more user friendly they can be robust bus to an extent if you need it to be but for the most part they really do service you know smaller teams who are looking to organize um a smaller projects or an amount of work and give you essentially a to-do list of things and when they're due and what the estimated work hours are for each of those tasks so there's a lot of varying differences in the systems again i think there's a wide range that we're talking about here and i'm really excited in terms of the vision for project hub only because it it is a system that could potentially fall in the middle for people in that you're getting your big corporations who have these monstrous complex projects with a lot of things to track, but then you're also hopefully going to attract your everyday project managers who are just looking for a system to track, you know, when they have assignments due at school or whatever that may be, right? So Greg, right, right. Uh, it, do I have that right? I mean, is there anything else in terms of Project Hub that you wanted to to convey to our audience today? You know, I, I, I think the way you've explained it is solid. And I think this is, you know, messaging has a ten- tendency to go through an evolution as you gain more and more feedback, right? So we're getting great feedback from people now, but as more people come into the system and give us additional feedback, we're, we're going to you know, use that to improve, you know, from a product management perspective, of course, right? And I don't know that there's a tremendous amount that I would add other than, you know, we're also going to leverage things like lots of self-help tools. So we're, we're not going to, we're, so in the enterprise space, we're going to handle things in one way at the team's level and maybe even what we call our essentials level, which would be for people like solo, uh, solopreneurs, prosumers, uh, people that are producing podcasts, but maybe it's not a huge team producing the podcast. But then again, if it was, we interestingly enough, cover all of that. And, yeah. and so I, I think the way you explained it is pretty darn accurate. <laughs> awesome. And, and, and it's an evolution to your point. Which is nice because as you receive user feedback, you guys are also looking at this role of continuous improvement, the Kanban model, essentially, of of how you can make the system better. So, Greg, is this is Project Hub kind of the pinnacle for you? Is there is there anything next for you? As uh, uh, I, I probably should ask, is Project Hub launched to the general public now? So we're we're in an interesting space on that. So. 
I would say that we're still in pre-launch, taking in users kind of on a select basis. Um, it's not necessarily come one, come all, but I would welcome that. But we want to we want to sift through that, right? So we want to give people the tool and really make sure it's a good fit for them, right? So um, right now, if you go to our website, which is projecthub.com, there's what we call our one-page wonder. It gives you a little bit of information and it has a place for you to sign up. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. That's about to change. So when we talk about what's next for Greg, a lot of that has to do with what's next for Project Hub. So mm. um, we're we're going to create a brand new website that has a bit more guidance to walk you through getting onboarded. We've got the new guided setup that's going to be coming out. You've seen a sneak peek of that. Yeah. And uh, you also gave us some feedback that we found useful. So thank you for that. And we get that from other users as well. So we want to thank everyone that's listening. If they're listening to this episode uh, for giving us that feedback, it really helps us to understand how our vision can, can be better crafted for you as a whole. Uh, now, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, really important about Project Hub is if you'd like to work from a single screen, we've got unique slide out technology that allows you to pick your favorite screen and get all your work done from there. You don't oh, have to nice. bounce around. So That's tons nice. of efficiency to keep people on point. But the other things that are next for Greg is relative to Project Hub, we've got additional features coming. And we're looking at Q1 and Q2 as kind of maybe a soft launch kind of period. Mm -hmm. So anybody that wants to get in now can come and sign up. They can also contact me on LinkedIn and I'll, I'll get them in the system and we'll work with them. Uh, we're still perfecting that process for you and that'll come in Q1. We're going to start, I'm going to start a podcast for Project Hub where I can showcase experts like yourself to give people guidance, not just about Project Hub, but about projects in general. Like what are some of the strategies for someone who's a project manager at home, not for business, but for nice. their life? Yeah. Or what are some of the strategies for somebody that's in this unique little niche business and how do you solve or mitigate for problems? I, I wanna do a lot of that. I've got some other ventures that I work on that take up the kind of remaining parts of my time where I do some CMMS consulting. Uh, I've got a, a podcast in that space that's coming out. And those are kind of the main things. Yeah. And you, I have to, I have to confess. So everybody knows right here, right now, you've been very encouraging with uh, offering guidance and support for that as I start that process. So I wanted to thank you for that as well. And of it's just, it's an exciting time for us. 2022, aside from the, the the challenges we all have globally that we have to face, it's very exciting for Project Hub and for the Project Hub users because the build out's going to round out now. We're going to move past MVP. And that's really exciting for me. Not to mention it's not super crazy expensive, but <laughs> this is not this is not about selling anything. This is about, hey, this is an open invitation to get in here and try it. Give us some feedback. And we value that in and of itself. And we hope that people listening would as well. Absolutely. I think uh, I took it, you know, after we, we met and communicated a few times and you've been on the podcast that I'm, you know, let me just see what Project Hub is all about. So this is in, this podcast is in no way trying to sell anything to the audience. It's just showcasing Greg and all of the work he's put into the system that could potentially be something great for a project manager to utilize. So I encourage all of you, if you're even just interested in kind of playing around in the system, seeing if you can connect with Greg and have that opportunity to, because as project managers, we bring such a unique perspective of, oh, well, I've tried X, Y, and Z systems and it didn't give me this. Everyone has some sort of feedback based on systems that we've utilized in our professional lives or even in our personal lives of project management systems and software that they did some things, but they didn't do other things. So I think Greg and his team would very much be open to hearing that type of feedback of as just an experienced user, what have you seen that works? What have you seen that doesn't work? And I think, again, this goes back to other podcasts we've had Greg on where we talk about continuous improvement and lessons learned and doing retrospectives. And I think this community, we're all about that. So anytime we can share our knowledge and our experiences with each other, this is what this platform is about. So 
I go back to if you have a chance, connect with Greg. He's wonderful. Check out projecthub.com. Give them some feedback because I want to make sure that at least at the very least they're supported in the feedback that we're able to give to them as project managers and our, from our community. So Greg, that will do it for you and I in this installment of the Everyday PM podcast. It's been wonderful again to have you on. Thank you so much for your continued support of the podcast, being a guest host on numerous episodes and also sharing your journey and your experiences with us today in this episode of the Everyday PM. So Greg, where can people follow you if they want to continue the conversation? Easiest way is on LinkedIn. Uh, under Greg Christensen, you'll you'll recognize uh, the Project Hub uh, logo when you go and look that up. So you can connect with me there. You can also go to projecthub.com and simply sign up. It's real simple. You fill out a basic form and then we'll reach out and we can get connected that way. And um, that's pretty much it for right now. And I really appreciate the opportunity to once again be on the show. And I am a big fan of the everyday PM and I, I I'll be saying that for a long time. <laughs> well, Greg, we appreciate you and look forward to everything that you've got going on in 2022, including that podcast as well as hopefully the launch of projecthub.com. So um, you can also support the Everyday PM podcast by giving us an amazing five star review on Apple Podcasts or listen to the podcast on whatever pod podcasting platform that you are using. We are on Google Play, Spotify, Breaker, Overcast, you name it. We're probably on there. Just search for the Everyday PM. You can also watch the visual version of this podcast on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Ancampia. Make sure while you're there to take a moment to like this video, leave us a comment on what you think, as well as turn, click the bell for those notifications so you know when new content goes up on the channel. So again, Greg, thanks so much for your time today. And I look forward to doing future podcast episodes with you, whether it's on your platform or mine. And thanks to all those for tuning in. And until next time, take care.